Hello everyone and welcome back to my Realism Overhaul series in Kerbal Space Program 0 0.90 Beta. In this episode I'm going to continue with my Jupiter probe and we're going to try to get to the other two moons of Jupiter. We have taken care of Io and Ganymede and so I want to hit Europa, in this case called Elu, and then Callisto, in this case named Ike. Now, as you might recall, our situation is a little bit precarious. We do have 3,000 meters per second, it looks like, with the, with the fuel in here that I actually had locked in the previous episode. And I can activate this engine after how long? Um, 46 minutes or so. So uh, that's part of our precariousness. Uh, we've got the signal delay. And we also have to rely on the other portion of this mission in order to communicate. So we, you see our tenuous thread through that that part of the mission which has the long range antenna. So that is the trick of that. The other part of this is that if we're not time warping we do not have enough electric charge generation. If we are time warping though we do because the probe core goes into low power mode. So that's positive. So the question is whether we can retain communication through all this. Here we should be getting what exactly? Um, okay, one more minute until the thruster activates. Okay, activation of thruster. Very good. So yeah, uh, my plan I have to say is that I'm probably going to end this series here and that's because I've got two other realism overhaul series I've got the realism overhaul in 1.0.4 which is basically catching up to where this series is it's not at the point where I'm building quite as big a rocket and I haven't unlocked a hydrolox engines yet but we can do interplanetary missions in that uh, save and I'm gearing up to and we've uh, sent a Kerbal into orbit and recovered the Kerbal so we've done that sort of thing. Uh, we're basically in the same place, uh, just I haven't done like a Jupiter probe or anything like that. But I think we're close enough. And the only downside to that series compared to this one is this one has clouds, but we really don't spend much time looking at the clouds anyway. We're not flying airplanes or anything like that. So yeah, uh, there are other positive aspects to that series and I think I'll just proceed in that series. Um, the other series that I'm uh, doing is, of course, Solar System Colonization, which is a sandbox series in Realism Overhaul. And that's interesting for all sorts of other reasons. But, uh, yeah, so I think, I think it makes sense to conclude this here, given that it is still a 0 .90 series, and it doesn't really reflect the state of Realism Overhaul at all anymore. Uh, especially since Realism Overhaul now has the right names for all the all the moons and planets and everything. And uh, a lot of other stuff has been fixed. So, yeah, that's the plan. But let me conclude this mission first. And then, then maybe this will be it. And the mission may conclude sooner than I think, depending on how our communication situation ends up. So far we're in very close orbits to our other portion of this mission. Once we do the sperm we'll still be pretty close to it. You notice I'm uh, doing the maneuver here to meet up with Europa and that is a 227 meter per second burn. I'm doing it here because that was the I think it was the ascending or descending node with Europa. That's why I'm not doing it at the apoapsis. So yeah, I'm doing it at the node. So I'm going to activate RCS and that's going to, let me just have flight computer out. Oh, I didn't read that. Okay, 46 minutes. Okay. So yeah, if we take a look at the approach, uh, 80, 87 kilometers is the plan. I'll we, we, it shouldn't be too touchy because this orbit is a very long orbit. Orbital period is 72 days. So I think I can start it here. And of course in this case throttle occurs immediately. We don't have too much inclination with respect to the target actually. 
just 0.5 degrees not a big deal possibly this would have been better done at the apoapsis but this didn't seem to be an unreasonable burn considering how much how much delta V we actually have We actually have a Ganymede encounter right there, but we've done that already, so we'll just pass up on that. Oh, we have a Callisto encounter right there. Um, you know, that's tempting. Hold on a sec. Hold on, hold on, hold on. I didn't see that before. Um, I think we could do the Callisto encounter and then come around and do the Europa encounter, maybe? Let me restore the Callisto encounter. Well, it's really gonna change our orbit. Let me get rid of this. Okay, can we... Hmm, it changes our orbit quite a lot. Well... Is there a way we can do this which will work for us? Well, it's a pretty good encounter with Callisto. And it brings our orbit in and everything. I think we'll go for Callisto first then. So, change of plans. Callisto first. And uh, it looks like 116 kilometers. And then we'll try for the Europa encounter next. Ooh, but this changes our orbit quite a lot. Mm. Which means that we might have trouble continuing to communicate with this portion. Well, okay. Well, we'll see. Let's try it. Let's see. Let's see how it works. Okay, that off. Uh, our electric charge is draining. Oh, and we've lost connection. Ah, uh, dang it. I think we might be too far away from the other portion of the mission. Yep, it's gonna die. It's too far away from that portion of the mission. Okay, well, here is the pass near Callisto. 99 kilometers, but we can't do anything. I guess we'll just enjoy the view. So, yep. Not too sure. Whoa, that's too fast. I don't know. Does Callisto really look that uh, brown and green, or is this coloring a little bit off? I don't think it should look green, right? Green is a very suspicious color for a moon to look. Mm, passing right by and away. And no science was done there, obviously. Will this probe happen to pass by Europa at some point? Let's see. possible since the inclination is very low. That might be in sort of a phased orbit. Let's get the HUD back up. Yeah, well, eventually it's got this phase. It's very close to the a multiple of the duration of the orbit of Europa. It's only got to close in a little bit every time, I think if it doesn't hit one of the other moons, which it sometimes comes pretty close to. Ganymede could easily throw this thing off. Okay, well, uh, maybe after one more orbit, if Ganymede doesn't do anything. Yep, slip by Ganymede. Uh, a little bit off. Hmm. 
Might be too far. Obviously something that would be easy to correct if I had control. Ah, okay. Alright. Eventually it might meet up with Europa. But uh, we're not going to be able to see it. This is probably the closest approach it's going to have. Well, maybe the previous one was closer. Alright. Back to the Space Center. So just taking stock of what we've accomplished. We didn't send anything to Mercury. We didn't... Uh, it looks like we... Well, Gilly is not... Uh, so we actually didn't send a probe to Venus, which is interesting. Yeah, I didn't realize we hadn't uh, sent a probe to Venus. Gilly I don't know about. Uh, I forget... Uh, Gilly must be uh, one of the moons of Mars. Yeah. Obviously we did plenty in orbit around Earth. And we have landed a probe on the moon, but not successfully land... Well, we have... We successfully... Well, sort of successfully landed Kerbals on the moon. It was a bit complicated, wasn't it? Um, we definitely didn't bring them back. So, uh, yeah. The moon has been a harsh, harsh situation for us. And it'll probably continue to be a harsh situation in 1.0.4. I have not attempted to land a Kerbal on the moon in the new series yet, though we have gotten probes to uh, lunar orbit, obviously. Um, in this series, we did get into orbit around Mars. We have not done that in the other series, but we have sent a flyby mission to Mars. Don't know where Ike is. And, uh, well, we just did the dual mission, our first dual mission in this series, so we just barely got there. So that's basically it. I mean, I think I think uh, it'll be a good place to pick up in the in the 1.0.4 series at this point. Now, one of the big benefits of the 1.0.4 series is that the tech tree is a lot better organized than this, and even better, you can see the nodes ahead of time. So it's a little bit easier to plan out what I'm going to do, and that's really good because I'm using Kerbal construction time in that series. So I'll have, I, I already feel like I have less of the frustration that I had in this series where I didn't know where stuff was and uh, really planning out my rockets was a mess. There I've got a very clear plan and my rockets tend to be a little bit more tightly designed as a result. Okay, so on that note, we have done some things in this series but I look forward to doing even more impressive things in the 1.0.4 series and I hope you'll join me there. Alright, so thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed the series and I'll see you next time.